All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this could be our second week of the AI class. Sorry, we can make it last week. We had something come up. But um, so today to start, we're going to quickly get the rest of you guys on GitHub because I'm not sure if you guys are on our GitHub. So right now we will get anyone who's not on the GitHub on the GitHub. So we have a chat today, which is great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you guys a, a Google form. Um, or maybe Viraj will send you a Google form. And then we will get you guys signed up onto our organization. If you know you're not on our GitHub, can you just like raise your hand right now? Okay, so, okay, someone filled out, perfect. I'm gonna add you. And the rest of you guys, if you guys aren't on it, if you guys could fill it out, that would be very helpful. So you, basically, I think you'll get an email. Oh, um, so you have a GitHub user, okay, perfect. So, yeah, I'm gonna add you guys. One sec. Okay, you are already in this. Got it. Uh, okay, let's see. Is there anyone else who is here today that has not joined the GitHub organization? Let's see. Okay, no more. All right, well, Ian gets the rest of you set up. Uh, we can just get started on our presentation. Ian, can you enable the screen sharing? Yeah, let me give that to you. Got it. Cool. Okay, so today we're just gonna get affiliated with a little bit of basic concepts of machine learning, uh, just to start going over this. So just let's just compare it to a human, for example. So machine learning, as you guys know, is trying to kind of use data to replicate uh, how humans learn in a way. So let's say you have a kid, right? A little child, and you want to teach them the difference between an apple and a banana. So the kid doesn't know what the red fruit is called. They just know like there's one, there are just two fruits there. And so they might think it's a banana. So your goal is to try and get the kid to understand that the red fruit is the apple, right? And so in the beginning, it's pretty simple. You just show them the red fruit and you say apple. You show them the, red the yellow fruit and you say it's a banana. And if you continue this over and over and over again, they'll figure out like the name apple is affiliated with this red fruit and the name yellow is affiliated with this banana. And let's say you just give them an apple and th they'll figure it out from the texture, from like how long it is lasting, from how it feels, from the color, from all its various traits, they'll be able to figure out hey, this fruit is an apple and the other fruit is a banana. And the way this works is you uh, tell the child after they guess if it's an apple or a banana. So let's say they have an apple uh, that you give them. They say, hey, it's an apple. And you're like, good job, you're right. 
And so, and so the uh, apple, and so now they know the red fruit is an apple and they'll start getting it right after this, right? And if you say, uh, and if they guess the apple, the red fruit was a banana, then you'll be like, no, you got that wrong. And they'll be like, okay, for, ne for next time, for future reference, this apple, this red fruit is not an apple. And they wanna be rewarded, so they'll keep doing what they did right and continue to improve this. And so machine learning, it'll do the exact same thing, but instead of the human biology behind it, they'll use a computer to do so. And this period where you're training an algorithm, what is right and what is wrong, you're, tell them, you're telling them, yeah, you're right and no, you're wrong, it's called training. So there are three main forms of training. There's supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and semi-supervised learning. We're going to go through this a little bit more, uh, especially next week with deep learning. But just for the sake of this example, we're gonna focus on supervised learning, which is where you give them uh, the features and labels, which we'll go through next. So in supervised learning, right, you have a data set. You have a data set of the traits you're trying to get them to learn. And a data set will have two different things. It'll have features and it'll have labels. So the features are the characteristics of what you're trying to predict. So let's say, let's go back to the apple analogy, right? So if you're dealing with the child's apple, the features are the color, the shape, the firmness, all these different traits that describe what makes up the apple. And the label is the correct answer, what you're trying to get the algorithm to predict. So the label for this red fruit would be called the apple because you want the algorithm to eventually be able to figure out, hey, this is an apple. So right here, you can just see kind of a diagram of what that looks like. So the algorithm wants to associate these features with the labels. It wants to be able to take in a bunch of features that you give it and spit out the correct label. And so initially, uh, you'll give it like one, one uh, entry, right? And the algorithm will basically be guessing which labels are associated with the features. And if it gets the feature right, then great, you are well on your way to training it. And so it'll understand these features are correlated with the correct labels. And from then on, it'll start associating these features with the correct labels. But then if it gets it wrong, it'll use math and determine, hey, this made my program worse. And from then on, it'll start showing that these mathematical patterns in the features is not associated with the label. It's probably associated with the other one. And it'll do this cycle thousands and thousands of times. Each of these cycles that it goes through with all the data is called one epoch. And it'll see how these features connect uh, with the label. And each time it'll carry on what you told it the last time. It'll carry on, oh, this is right and this was wrong. And it'll continue to improve how much, how well it matched with the data. So just like the human baby, baby will use the patterns it learned in the past, the machine learning algorithm will do exactly the same thing. So in this diagram, for example, right, you can see each epoch again is a testing cycle, is a training cycle, right? So you can see it started off really low, it started off at like 51% ish, right? And then over time, it just gradually started improving and uh, eventually stabilizing over here. So I'm just gonna uh, take you through a little bit of how these concepts work. Uh, I have, I put a little bit of the math in here. I'm not gonna go through it because all of us are at different math levels and it'll be kind of confusing for a lot of you, but I'm just gonna explain a little bit on how the uh, algorithm actually figures this out. So it uses this uh, little thing called a loss function. And so once you take it through, right? Once you like give it some features and give it some labels, it wants to figure out how uh, much it got it wrong, right? So it wants to figure out, hey, like let's say the correct answer was 0 0.2, right? For something you gave it. But this algorithm, because it's still training, it guessed 0 0.8. And so now it knows how much it's off. It knows it's 0 0.6 off. And every time it'll be able to calculate how much it's off using a different function. In this case, it's called the mean square error loss function. So the point of this function is that it's able to tell you again, how off you are. And so eventually at the end of a training cycle, you're left with the number that represents uh, this. And your model's main goal is to minimize how small this number is. Because again, you're trying to get your model to be as close to the right answer as possible, right? And that means you minimize how wrong it is. So minimizing this number that we call a uh, mean, a, a, a loss function. And so each time, each time you go through a cycle, it gives you uh, the loss function result, right? It tells you how wrong you are. And 
this is kind of a diagram of how it'll shift throughout your duration of a training this model. So at the beginning, you can see that it's way off, right? It's all the way up here. This is how it how wrong it initially was. But as you continue training it, it'll keep cycling downwards and eventually reach this global minimum. And the global minimum is uh, the point where it is as accurate as it can possibly be. So it cannot be any more right than it currently is. And this is the number you're trying to reach. And to reach this number, the algorithm uses a lot of calculus to be like, hmm, if I shift my weights this way, right, the algorithm will actually get worse. My uh, loss function will, the number of results will increase. That's wrong. I don't want that. And if I shift my weights this way, the loss function will go down. And oh, that's good. I want to keep going down until I reach this global minimum. So once you reach the global minimum, your algorithm is trained and you know it will basically uh, be the best it can be. And over thousands, and again, over thousands and thousands of iterations uh, and, th and various epochs, you're basically going through and figuring out the path that lets it have the lowest loss function output. So that is the fundamentals of how machine learning works. You're trying to just minimize how wrong it is uh, through calculus and other mathematical techniques. And Ian's going to th take you through a little project where you guys will actually code your first machine learning algorithm. Yeah, okay. So um, if you guys are ready to do that, I will send you guys the notebook that I'm gonna be using for this uh, project. Um, let me pull it up. Um, so today we are going to do a linear regression project. So if you guys are in middle school, if you guys have taken algebra, you guys probably know what a line of best fit is. So that's kind of what we're going to make. That's actually a machine learning algorithm. The one you've done in Desmos is uses machine learning to create a line of best fit. And uh, based on the uh, presentations off in Virage, basically, uh, like I'll briefly explain, what you're trying to do is you're trying to minimize that that error from the line of best fit and the actual dot, and you're trying to find a overall minimum. So if you guys want to go ahead and open up this um, notebook, you guys can code this yourself if you want. Uh, you guys can just open up any um, uh, Google Colab notebook and follow uh, do it yourself while I do it. Or you can just follow along and ask questions and figure everything out as we go. So I'm going, I, I will also screen share. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so you guys can see, um, you guys can see the project. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll give you guys a second to quickly find, uh, get this open. So just open it, and if it's not loading for you, you can just like keep reloading until it does show up. Um, basically, it'll look like this in the GitHub, um, in GitHub. And some of the pictures won't show up. So what I recommend is using this, uh, opening collab extension. I will send you guys the link to that right now. So you guys can actually install this Chrome extension, which allows you to very easily open stuff in Google Colab. I'll give you guys like two more minutes just kind of get set up. Okay, I will just go ahead and get started. So basically the, this, the goal of this project will be to use linear regression to predict the salary of an employee given how many years of experience they have. And this is for any random company. Um, so for our first project, we'll use linear regression to predict the salary of an employee given how many years of experience they have. So theoretically this relationship should be linear, right? As we would expect that as you, uh, you know, you 
work more, how more years you work at a company, the more money you're going to make. That's just the assumption we're going to make. So the data set we're going to use to train and test our model is called salarydata.csv. And this is also available in our GitHub. Uh, if you go to project data, if you go to this folder, it's this one right here. And we'll look at it in a second. So basically uh, it has two columns, right? It has years of experience and it has salary for 30 different employees. Um, so X will be our independent variable, right? And it's gonna represent the years of experience. And Y will be our dependent variable and represent their salary. So uh, if we were to graph this, right? We would see kind of a scatter plot of how many years they've worked on the x-axis and then their corresponding income based on the number of years they've worked. Not actually, I think I spelled represent wrong. Okay, um, anyways. Um, so using the code below, which is down here, we're going to use pandas to open our data set and initialize these variables. So when coding any type of application, the first step is to always import your relevant libraries, right? Um, if you guys are taking the Python class, maybe you guys know a little bit about libraries. Basically, uh, we're going to import libraries. Uh, we're going to import them all together at the beginning. But um, for this project, I'm just going to import them as we use them so we can kind of learn exactly how they're used. Um, so we're going to import pandas. And pandas is a very essential Python library. It's very important for data science, machine learning, and AI, obviously. Um, the graphic below, which is like right here, uh, demonstrates some of the functionalities of pandas. Uh, we can use pandas to basically read, write, and generally interact with our data. Data can come in most in any kind of form. Generally, it comes in CSVs, which are just spreadsheets, comma-separated values, same thing as a spreadsheet. But um, we're going to use pandas to import a data set and initialize our variables x and y. So this is kind of what a data set looks like in pandas. But let's go ahead and uh, run this line of code. So this is how we're going to access our data set. Generally, if you're running this on like your local machine, which is just like you know your terminal, um, you would have to have it in a file path. But we can actually access the this link um, on our own. So I'm going to send you guys this link in the chat, so you guys can do it on your own. But basically, this uh, we're going to use the raw version, which allows us to get um, basically allows us to get uh, the the raw version, which we need to use for Python. So right now, obviously, this if we look at the data set, it looks like a real table, right? It has table, has the, the title and everything like that. But we obviously don't want the title because that can't fit in our data. So what we're going to do is we're going to press raw right here. And then we're going to get this, this exact link. And now, as you can see, it's actually a comma separated value, right? You have commas separating each one of these values. And this looks unpleasant. But this is how our, our code actually is going to run. And what we're doing right here is we're just removing the first um, the first, uh, basically the, we're going to remove these because we don't want this in our data set, right? So we have our X variable, which is our, uh, basically our inputs for our model. And we have our Y variable, which is our, um, labels for the model and X, uh, capital X is kind of how you denote inputs and lowercase Y is how you kind of denote labels. So the first thing we need to do with our data is we need to actually split it into a test and train set. So when coding a model, we need. Uh, to do two things. First, we need to train it to improve its accuracy, right? Um, but we also need to evaluate how well it works. And we can't really test or we can't evaluate our model on our training data because the model has already seen that data many times, right? So it's going to be better at predicting that. What we really want to use it on is new data that we've never seen before because that's what machine really learning really is, right? Making predictions on new data as we learned in uh, the first week. So to do this, we're going to split our data into training and testing sections. Uh, you can pick any divide you want as a fraction. Uh, we're just going to use uh, one third of it to uh, one third of the 30, uh, 30 samples, which means we're going to use 10 samples for evaluation. Uh, so we're going to use two thirds, 20 samples for training and one third or 10 samples for testing. And then what we can use this, we can use a scikit-learn, which is another, um, another package that is generally used in machine learning to basically import something that does a train test, test split. It's going to output our X train and X test, which are our inputs for training and testing and our labels for training and testing. And we just call the method and we pass in our X and Y. We um, tell how much we want it for test. And this is just uh, for randomizing. And then now we have two separate data sets, one for testing, one for uh, training. So now let's actually build our linear regression model to train our data. And linear regression, again, is a line of best fit. Um, so we're going to use sklearn, which is a useful Python library that contains various machine learning classes, uh, classes including methods for linear regression. This graphic below 
uh, explains the full capabilities of scikit-learn. So by importing this library, we'll have a quick reference to all types of machine learning algorithms instead of replicating the entire mathematical process again and again. So as the stereotype goes, programs are lazy and we're gonna use these methods because it's far more efficient. It's much easier just to use a, math, a package that exists out there than like writing it yourself. There's way too much math to write it yourself. And so here's a bunch of different algorithms, right? We have classification, clustering, dimensionality reduction. And in this situation, we're gonna use regression, which is going to basically create a line. So um, we now have the facilities to train our model and we have training specific data and the algorithm to analyze this data. Using these two features, we're gonna train our data set using linear regression. So to do this, we will utilize a variable uh, known as linear regression, then call the forward fit command. So linear regression is a class that we really call the forward fit command. And if you guys know anything about object or uh, object oriented programming, methods have or classes have methods. So we're going to use the linear regression class, which we import, call the fit method, which basically trains our model, and then that's it. That's, we literally have trained it. So uh, I don't know if I ran this. Actually, I need to I need to run these. I run this and I run this. Um, now basically what we're going to do is we're going to do from scikit-learn.linear models, which is basically where they get the models. You're going to import linear regression, which is this model. Regressor, which is what we're going to call our model, is equal to, we're just going to initialize it. And then we're going to call fit, and we're going to pass in our training inputs, and we're going to pass in our labels. And when we run this, it trains literally in seconds, because uh, training is never going to be this fast. It, it's only this fast in this scenario because we don't have a lot of data. We literally only have 20 samples and it's just numbers, right? But if you do image processing or any sort of other machine learning processing, it takes hours to train, but this took literally like half a second, even less. So now we are done training our model. So our model is saved as the regressor, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to basically make predictions. So we have a linear regression model that's completely fitted and trained on our data, right? Um, but we need to assess how well it does on, on to predict on unknown data, which is the entire purpose of machine learning, right? We never want, machine learning is not valuable to predict things about data it's already seen, right? It's on new data. And so when we deploy it on a real situation, basically the goal would be to uh, essentially uh, predict new data. So to do this, we will refer to our other sections of our data set, the testing section. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the predict function to do this. So what we're gonna do is y pred is equal to regressor.predict uh, x test. So we're gonna pass in the x test to predict method. And this is going to basically test our model on the test samples. And then when we look at y predictions, the predictions, right? The labels, the predicted labels, the predicted salaries based on the number of years they've worked. Here we can see a bunch of different salaries, right? So if we, we can also look at the x test, right? Uh, so if you kind of pull up, make a new cell and we call, look at X test. Basically, we can see that someone who's worked only 1.5 years is gonna make $40,000. But someone who's made work 10, 000, or 10 years, sorry, is gonna make $123,000. So obviously, as we can see that, the more years you work, the more money you're gonna make. So now we have made predictions, but again, we have to compare these predictions to the actual labels. So here's how we can actually visualize our training set results. So right now, all this is taking place in the background, right? We can't really see what's going on for ourselves. So to visualize these results, uh, we're gonna use another Python library called Matplot. And this allows us to plot our data on a graph, which is very helpful. So we're going to import Matplot as PLT, just for plot. So first we're going to plot the actual data points of the training set, which is done with this. And we're just gonna label them as red. So these are our training examples. Then we're gonna plot our regression line, which is basically the predictions on the training sample. So this is our training set and this is our test set. So if we look at the results on our training set, uh, which is gonna be much better than our test set, right? So if we look at the training set, uh, we're just gonna give the graph label and like it's already made, but I mean, if I run it again, you're gonna see the same thing. So as you can see, the line is pretty good. Like if you were to draw this line by yourself after graphing this, this line is like about what you would get, right? As you can see that the error is pretty minimal between each of these points. Some of them are obviously a little more, such as this one or these ones over here, right? There's going to be a bigger gap between the line. Well, that, that's kind of what happens, right? It happens when you, uh, you can't fit every line exactly, right? You want just the best line. So uh, we're going to visualize our test. Okay. 
Uh, so now we're going to visualize how well our model is going to do on the training data, right? So we don't actually know how accurate it is, but we're going to do it now. So to do so, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to test it on the uh, test data set. So X test, Y test, and we're going to predict. And as we can see, it is pretty good. We can see that a couple of them are exactly on the line. There's just a few, these ones are for you a little bit off. This one's pretty close. These two are a little bit off, but that's kind of what happens, right? So we can see that our model is quite good at predicting um, the exact accuracy. So now let's get to the practical kind of application of our model, right? So at this point, we're completed with our model. Um, as an example of how you could apply this to a model in the real world, the code below shows the predicted salary of a person given uh, a certain year of experience. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass in an array of just literally just 15, the number 15, and we're going to see how much money they make. And if we predict, we can see that this person is expected to make $167,000. And if we change this to, let's say, 10, right, 10 years of experience, where we can see that this person would make about $120,000. If you, let's say, like 100, right, like 1,000, they would make a lot of money. E is X to, this is 9 to the 10th, 8th power. Right. If we did one, they are expected to make thirty-six thousand. Let's try try zero. They are expected to make two thousand or twenty-six thousand as just a base salary, right? And this is kind of how you would use your machine learning models in the real world. Basically, what you would do is you would take the model, you'd save it, and then you would just pass in new inputs. So let's say we were doing an image classification model, which we'll do next week. We would basically have that set up, would pass in an image, and we'd get a prediction and you display that prediction to your user. And this is kind of how you deploy machine learning models in the real world. Well, let me kind of reset this. But other than that, uh, that is just it for the project today. Uh, that is basically it for what we have today. If you guys have any questions, we can go over it today. Um, if you guys coded this yourself, I'd love to see you guys kind of upload it to your own repo. So what you guys can do is you can kind of, you can just click new, right? You can make your own repo. So I would just say, ions, uh, I in repo, right? Code. I, I'd say like this, right? And then I just give a description. Um, and then I would make it public so everyone can see, and I'd make a readme, right? And now I can upload my code to this repository. Um, I'm not going to make one for myself, but um, basically, and the way you push your code, you're going to click file, you're going to click save a copy in GitHub. This is how you push to GitHub. It's going to require you to authorize. And then you can just say, you can give it a commit message. And today I'll say, uh, where is this from? So you have to actually find the repository that it's from. So I would, this is from, mine is in lesson materials. You guys should not push the lesson materials. You guys should push your own personal repo. I'm gonna push the lesson materials because you know that's, that's my repo. And I'm just gonna say, updated for week two class. That's just any whatever. And I'm gonna click include a link. And then now it is pushed to GitHub and we are done. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Does anyone have any questions for today? Varad, any thoughts, anything? Any questions from anyone? If you guys have any questions after as well, you can. Yeah. Uh, email either of us exactly uh, also feel free feel free to play around with the notebook you can make any changes if you want to look stuff up and try and add to it in any way just for your own learning uh go ahead yep. and and again all these notebooks if you want to look back if you want to like look at the math behind a machine learning model or anything like that they're again in lesson materials mm -hmm. This is basically your, your everything you need. This is like the class syllabus. This is the textbook. That's kind of everything you need. Mm -hmm. um, we'd also appreciate for, if anyone could quickly open the repo and press star right here. So whoever has not done that, please do that because that really helps uh, the repo and you kind of need to do it once you're in the, in the organization. So go ahead and do that. Um, so before you guys leave, you guys can quickly do that. That would be a huge plus. Uh, I'm just going to send you guys a link. So you have it. Oh, whoops. Here you go. 
Um, but yeah, no questions from anyone. Okay, so I will go ahead and end the recording. How do I do that? Okay. Yeah, that's it.